Hello friends, my name is Kelsey and I, um, this is my first video y'all, <laughs> like very first. I have filmed so many like first videos and I've never felt confident posting any of them um, because honestly, I never want to do it wrong. I don't want to have like an amateur setup. I don't want to be using an amateur camera. I don't want to be doing anything amateur. I want it to be very professional. So um, this is my first like actual video that I'm going to um, edit and spend time making it right. Um, so yeah, um, I figured I would just film like a, why you gotta walk in here and screw me up? <laughs> So I figured for my first video, I would just do like um, a get ready with me um, talk through where I'm answering some questions that I found online, um, just kind of talking about who I am and about me and um, just see, you know, where it goes, um, just kind of introducing myself to you. Um, I don't really know the direction that this is all going to go <laughs> as far as what I even want to film, but, um, I figured this is a good start just to get to know me. And, um, this is the makeup that I'm going to be putting on. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, you got me thinking. Oh, you got me thinking now. So I've got some questions that I'm going to answer to kind of tell you a little bit more about myself. Um, since this is my first video, I feel like um, kind of just give you a little, a little bit of who I am and all this fun stuff. So we'll do that and I'll list everything below that I'm using um, on my face. Um, that way, if you want to know is there. Okay, so my full name is Kelsey Brooke Waller. Um, I, it asks what I was named after. Um, I was named after a cousin of my dad's. Um, his name was Jim Kelsey Cooper. Um, and part of, part of that um, comes from Kelsey being a last name in my family on my dad's side. Um, and it dates, that last name dates back in our family all the way to like the Civil War time. So um, long story short, uh, before I was born, uh, my dad's cousin, um, Jim Kelsey Cooper, he passed away, but my mom met him and loved him and just thought he was super, like a super good guy. He was real friendly and nice. And everybody kind of really liked him. So when they had me, they decided that that's what they were going to name me. Um, my mom said that, like, Brooke didn't really come from anywhere. Um, but that's where Kelsey came from, was my dad's cousin. So there's that. Um, let's see, where am I from? So I am from Lubbock, Texas. I was born and raised here, lived here my whole life. Um, if you don't know much about Lubbock or where it is, if you know of the college Texas Tech, that's where Texas Tech is. So um, not a whole lot to do here. It's kind of a boring place, honestly, to grow up. Um, but, <gasps> but it's not, it's not bad. It's like a, it's kind of a mix between a small town and like a big city. Um, so I like it because it's not, you don't get all the stuff that you would get in a big city, but also, um, you know, you do get some of the perks of having a smaller, a smaller town, but some of the perks of having it be like a bigger college town. So, um, the music scene is really good here. Um, and that's something that adds to it for sure. Which one of my parents am I closest to? Um, so I'm probably closest to my mom as far as like who I go to and talk to about things in my life. Um, she's kind of always been like one of my closest friends and somebody that I feel like um, I can just tell anything to. So uh, definitely my mom on that one. 
which one of my parents am I more like? Definitely my dad. Um, I'm way more like my dad than I am like my mom. Um, my dad is very social and outgoing, and my mom is more of like an introvert. So um, I'm very out, like I like to talk, I like to hang out with friends, I like to leave the house and go do stuff with people. Um, and my mom is very introverted. She would rather be at home all day by herself um, and not leave. And uh, so I'm definitely more like my dad. Hey, quit. Get out of here. Um, which also leads back to the question before this of who I'm closer to. Um, I'm definitely closer to my mom because I'm not just like her. Me and my dad tend to butt heads a lot um, because we are so similar. So that's definitely part of why I am as close as I am with my mom. Are your parents still married? Yes, my parents um, got married in 85. So they just celebrated in March this year, they just celebrated their 35 year anniversary. So it, I'm, I've always been really proud of my parents having been married as long as they have. Um, because especially like in this day and age and you know, you just don't see that very often anymore. You don't see a lot of people having been married for, you know, 30 years, a lot of people end up in divorce. And I know, I remember growing up, um, a lot of my friends, like their parents were divorced and they had to split time um, with their mom and dad and go spend a weekend with mom and then go spend a weekend with dad. And I remember just thinking that would be so, so weird and so different because my parents um, have always stayed together. So. Yeah, my parents are still married and going strong. Are your grandparents still married? So my grandparents also married really young. Um, this is my mom's parents that I'm talking about here. Um, my dad's parents, my dad's dad died like a few months before I was born, so I never knew him. And then my dad's mom had... Um, Alzheimer's and so my memories of her are not very many. I don't have a lot of memories about her because like most of my memories where I can kind of remember her, she was already losing it a little bit. So I don't have like vivid memories of her. And then when I was like, I think I was like seven or eight, um, my dad's brother was gonna take care of her. So they moved her to Louisiana. And then I really only saw her like one more time after that and it was when I was um, in my teenage years and I could kind of understand what was going on. And um, I think I was like 14 or 15. And anyways, I, um, I got to see her then and then she passed like a few months after that. So um, I was never close with my dad's parents like that just because I wasn't ever around them. You know, I didn't know my dad's dad and then my dad's mom being, having Alzheimer's um, made it difficult. Um, for that. So anyways, they were married. I don't remember how many years because I don't know the stuff on their marriage, but um, they were married up until they both passed away. And fun fact on them, they actually passed away on the exact same day. Um, I believe it's April, April 8th, I believe. Um, and it was 16 years apart to the day that they passed. So I always thought that that was kind of neat. You know, they loved each other so much and they ended up passing away like that. Um, now my mom's parents, they were really the only grandparents that I ever knew growing up because they lived here in town and they were both around and in fairly good health. Um, my grandma babysat me and my brother, um, when we were little and she ran a daycare out of her house and, um, would take care of kids and stuff. And that's, that was like her, her job while my grandpa had like a day job. Um, and so, you know, with her, I was a lot, I was a lot closer to her because she kept us so much when we were kids. Um, so, you know, I was definitely close with my mom's parents. Um, so she babysat us when we were kids and we stayed with her. And then my grandpa at that time he was a car salesman for like a Lincoln dealership. Um, so he was still, you know, working and all of that. Um, 
they married young. Um, my, they were actually pretty close in age. Um, their birthdays were only like six, six months apart. So um, my cat just knocked a box over. Um, they married super young. Um, they married when they were 18. Um, and unfortunately, they only made it to 60 years because my grandmother passed away, um, not this past March, but the March before that. So um, they had their 60 year anniversary in August, I believe is when their anniversary was. And then she passed away that following March. So um, had that not happened, my grandparents would be going on 62 years now. Um, but they're, they were married for long long time um and that's kind of one of the relationships that i've always like really admired because my grandmother she was not an easy woman to love just to be completely honest she she was a hard woman and she was very stubborn and in her ways and she you know was just one of those people that it's her way or the highway and she was not the easiest to love. So I always applaud my grandpa because he is just one of those men that you look at and you just completely admire because he would have stayed no matter what. So just backstory a little bit on them. So anyways, yes, my both of my grandparents were still married until um, one or both of them died. Um, my grandpa is still kicking. He's going to be 82, 82, uh, next week. So what would your parents have named you if you were the opposite gender? So according to my mother, they, so, you know, back when I was born, I'm 26. So back when I was born, it was like fairly normal to not find out the gender of your babies. Um, that was something that didn't really become a thing until like, I guess, kind of more recent, more like the 2000 era of like actually finding the gender out of your baby. So my parents actually didn't know the gender of me or my older brother um, before we were born. So they had names picked out for both um, in case it was a boy or a girl or, you know, whatever happened. So um, if I would have been a boy, my mom said that they were planning to name me Cameron. Um, and to be honest, I kind of wish that they would have named me that anyways, because I feel like that's a really cute girl name. But anyways, that's what my name would have been a, if I had been a boy. What is the most important thing in your life? Hmm. I guess I kind of have two. Um, so I have a seven-year-old son. Um, I had him when I was 18 years old. Um, he is the biggest blessing and mess and headache in my life. Um, I love him to pieces, but he is, he is a headache. Um, he wears me out, but he is also just so sweet and so thoughtful. Um, so that would be part of it. Part of what's most important in my life. Um, the other part would probably be my fiance. Um, so I have been with him for about three years now. Um, we just had our three year anniversary. Um, he proposed in March and then we had our three year anniversary in, um, July. So, um, definitely the two of them. And then just my family. I mean, I'm very close with my mom and my dad and, and my brother, he lives in Washington DC. So we don't really talk to him as much just because he is so far away. It's my brother does not live here. So we are still fairly close. We don't talk to him. Um, a whole lot because of how far away he is um, and the time difference and everything. But um, he does come down once a year for Christmas um, and sees us then. So it could be much worse. What is your favorite candle scent? Um, so I actually have a couple. Um, they're both from Bath and Body Works. Um, I have some of them burning behind me but the labels turn around. So those are the mahogany teakwood candles. Um, I love like 
fresh man out of the shower smells. That's totally what um, my like my go-to scent is for like around the house. And luckily my fiance enjoys that too, um, or else I'd be in big trouble because he would hate coming home and smelling the house like a man. Um, but that is like my most favorite like go-to scent. And then I also like the sweater weather from Bath and Body Works. Um, that's like my favorite fall scent. So yeah, my other, my other scent is sweater weather from Bath and Body Works. That one smells really good too. And that one's not really even a manly scent. I just really like how that one smells, so. Are you more likely to avoid conflict or engage head on? So <laughs> for people that are close to me and really know me, they know the answer to this question. Um, I mean, it kind of depends, I'll be honest. It all depends on who my conflict is with. Um, for the most part, I'm a pretty outspoken person. I'm not one to um, just let somebody do or say whatever they want, especially if it's something that I don't agree with or I don't like and it affects me. So um, in that aspect, like when it comes to work or like my personal relationships, I'm definitely someone who is going to tell you that I don't like it or speak my mind or tell you how I feel about it. Um, which is, which is why I said the people who know me will know the answer to that because like my friends at work and stuff, they know that that's how I am. Um, and my family, my mom, especially my poor mother knows that that's how I am. Um, now it, it, it does also depend on certain things. So like with my fiance, Sal, like I will avoid conflict if it's not something that's I feel is like really important. So if it's something that I'm just being petty about and I'm just mad for no reason, then I'll avoid it because ain't nobody got time for that. I ain't trying to start nothing, but I don't have to start. So I'm definitely um, a confrontational person. Uh, do you prefer kissing or cuddling? So me and my fiance both prefer cuddling. We are big cuddlers. Um, you'll catch us a lot of the times, um, here at the house. If we don't have anything going on, we'll just be laid up in the bed together, not doing anything like watching a movie or watching TV, um, and just laying in bed together. So definitely cuddling over kissing. Um, I do like to give kisses, but, um, I am much more of a cuddle person when given the option between the two. Do you have a tattoo? I actually have four tattoos. Um, they're all kind of spread out over my body. And to be completely honest with you, they're all pretty hidden. Um, I have one that is a visible tattoo when I have on short sleeve shirts um, or anything that's obviously not a long sleeve. Um, and that one is right here on my arm, a skull with a flower crown. Um, that tattoo was like one of those that I'm like, oh, why did I do this? I, uh, that one was a Friday the 13th tattoo and I made the very, very poor decision to, um, go with one of my fiance's old roommates that I was friends with. Um, and my fiance was coming back from being out of town for work. So, um, it was just me and his old roommate and, um, he was like, oh, I know this girl. She's done tattoos for me in the past. Let's go use her. And I was like, okay, cool. So we drive to this place. He gives me the address and we are just following the GPS. And we pull up and it's like an apartment or like a duplex. And I'm like, um, okay, so like does she do tattoos out of her house or like what's the deal? And he was like, yeah, it's no big deal. She's done tattoos for me all the time. She's very professional, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. So we go in and, um, I'm like, you're going to go first because this seems a little sketch. So you can go first and then let me know. And then I'm going to try to think about it and see if this is something that I even really want to mess with. Cause this is really shady. And so he went first and he got a little, I don't even remember. He got, Oh, he got like a little doll, like a little, Frankenstein looking doll. And, um, and then it was my turn and I'm like, 
So like before this tattoo, I had never gotten a visible tattoo. All of my other ones are on my torso. Um, so I was like really nervous because I'm like, <laughs> I don't know where to put it. I don't want to take my shirt off in this lady's apartment and let her tattoo my torso. Um, I'm like, I don't know what to do. And so I very rashly made the decision. Let's just put it right here on my forearm. This is a great idea. So we start, she starts doing the tattoo and I will say this, I don't know for sure that it was her fault. What happened, I don't know for sure that it was her fault. She was very clean, even though it wasn't an apartment. She had one room that was specifically designated for tattooing. She had like an actual tattoo table. She had real machines. I watched her take everything out of sterile packaging. So disclaimer, I don't know that it was her fault. So anyways, go through with the tattoo, get home. Everything's cool. Well, whew, I don't know how soon after. Um, probably like a week, within a week. Um, it just was not healing right. And it started getting these like red bumps all over it. And I'm like, huh, weird. None of my other tattoos have done that before. So I'm kind of freaking out about it. And I'm just like, I'm not sure if this is right or normal because mine have never done this before. And I'm not a tattoo expert because I have four. Um, this was my fourth one. So, um, you know, I was not a tattoo expert by any means or knew what was normal. So I start asking some of my friends that have um, sleeves and are like tatted up and I'm like, hi, can you look at this? Is this normal? And they're like, yeah, you should probably go see a doctor because that looks infected. And I'm like, cool. So I try to put it off for a little bit. Cause I was like, maybe it'll get better. I really don't want to have to go to the doctor and tell a doctor that I got, uh, this tattoo done in, uh, someone's house. So I'm like, Oh, please, please, please just get better. Well, it does not get better. It just continues to get worse and to get more bumps all over it. And I'm like, oh, awesome. So I end up going to the doctor and it's like all swollen and pussy and it is not even remotely healed. And this is like three weeks out after I had it done. So um, at that point, it should have been pretty healed. I mean, it should have been pretty healed, but it was not. Anyways, the doctor, <laughs> the doctor literally walks in and takes one look at my arm and she's like, oh, yeah, that's definitely staff. Um, I'll get you a shot and a prescription and you need to take it and, and take care of that. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, I, I have not had a tattoo since. And that was like, I got that like the first year that me and my fiance Sal started dating. So that's like been almost three years now. Cause it was in October. So yeah about a month away from being three years ago. And I'm, I have not gotten one since cause I'm just not a fan. I'm like, I'm going to get an infection again and I'm going to die. My arm's going to fall off. So I have that one. There's just a backstory on that one. Um, the other three that I have, I have a butterfly, um, a monarch butterfly on my back. Um, and then I have my son's name, like across um, like right under here, right under my boob. Um, I have his name right there. And then I have the state of Texas, um, under my armpit area, like my side area. So those are the three other tattoos I have. No fun stories with those. They hurt. That's about it. No infection though. Do you have any pets? Yes, we have four. So we have, um, one of them is laying on my table right here. Hold on. This is our baby, our newest little baby. His name is Walter, and he is about four months old. He is a Persian kitten. You see him? Walter, look at the camera. Look at his baby. It's cute. So this is Walter. He's almost four months old. Um, and then I have a Boston Terrier. Winston, come here. These are my babies. My fiance has two as well. Come here. And then I had this boy. This is my boy. This is my baby. My fiance did not want him, but we have him because him is a good boy. He's looking at himself in the mirror. <laughs> Who is that? So those are my two. Um, and then we also have a big gray Persian um, named Eleanor. She's around here somewhere. She's She just turned two. And then we have... Um, 
my dog that I brought into our relationship. She is a Yorkie Shih Tzu mix. Um, even though she was my dog prior, my fiance has claimed her as his own and she is now apparently his dog. So yes, we have those four animals and they are rotten, rotten. Um, Winston is like my psychopath. He is legit crazy as hell and just runs around the house like a wild man half the time. Walter is kind of the same way. Uh, he likes to jump and attack my feet or if I have food out anywhere, he wants to sniff it and see if it's something that smells good to him or not. Belle, which is our Yorkie mix, is the queen of the house and she knows that she is the queen of the house because she walks around here like she's the queen of the house. Ellie is just, Ellie is like our typical cat. Like Ellie is sweet and lovable and cuddly and likes cuddles, but on her terms. When she wants them, when she asks for them and no other time. She's, she is very typical cat with her personality. How many relationships have you been in? So this is kind of a random question because it's a difficult one. I, I've been in a lot of relationships, but I only really count the serious ones. The ones where I actually felt like, hey, there's a possibility that I might be down to marry this person. Like if, if this person were to ask me to marry them right now, I might be down for it. This is something that, this is somebody that I see a future with. And when we're speaking in terms of that, um, I've only really had three of those. Um, so not even my first relationship was one that I felt that way about, but, um, so my son's father was one, I was with him for, um, four years and then, um, or well, almost four years. Um, and then after that I dated, um, a guy that I met in college for about a year and a half. Um, and then my fian my now fiance, um, that we've been together for three years now. So, um, pretty much those three are like my big main relationships. Obviously I dated in between those, but, um, those are definitely like my three most predominant relationships in my life. Have you ever read any of the Harry Potter, Hunger Games, or Twilight series? Which one was your favorite? So, um, yeah, no, I have not read any of those because I don't like to read. However, I have seen the Twilight series. I have seen those movies. Um, and I have seen all of the Harry Potter movies. I have not seen the Hunger Games movies, but um, definitely if we're talking about my favorite between those, the two that I've seen, definitely Harry Potter. Harry Potter is like a seasonal thing in this house. So um, Harry Potter is something that we watch every fall. We watch through all of them and we eat popcorn and drink our hot cocoa and watch all of the Harry Potter movies, Harry Potter movies in order. We also are always quoting Harry Potter around here. Um, one of the big ones that we always do is, um, sorry about that. You know, when Hagrid walks in and the Sorcerer's Stone and knocks the door down. Um, so definitely Harry Potter is my, is my favorite between that and the Twilight series. Okay. Next. Next question. What is one thing that you would rather pay someone to do than do yourself and why? Uh, clean this house. 10 out of 10, I would rather pay someone to clean my house than for me to clean it. Definitely, if I could pay someone to do something that I wouldn't have to do anymore, we begin a housekeeper. That's all I'm saying. What is one guilty pleasure you enjoy too much to give up? Um, probably watching Grey's Anatomy on repeat for like, ever. Um, so, you know, it's on Netflix. It is like my all time favorite freaking show. And I literally like, I'll watch it through. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it, just skip this part. But I watch it basically till McDreamy, my beautiful, beautiful Derek dies. And then when Derek dies, I, I've only watched it past Derek dying twice. Because it's just, it's not that it's bad, it's just not as good. Like, 
I loved Derek's character and I loved him and Meredith's marriage. Like it was just so beautiful. And so when he dies, I'm like, I'm like dreamy. I can't watch it anymore. And so, yeah, that's definitely my guilty pleasure. What is the first thing you do when you open your eyes in the morning? Close them again, if we're being honest. But after that, when I do open my eyes, for real, and I'm not going back to sleep, um, I normally check my phone. <laughs> what is the first app you check when you wake up in the morning? Um, it's probably a mix, honestly. If I have a notification on one of mine, I will check that one first. Like if I have a notification on my Facebook or my Twitter, that will normally be the first one that gets opened. But on a normal morning when I don't have any notifications on anything, um, normally it's probably a tie between Snapchat and Facebook. What is your hidden talent? Oh, I like to believe that it's my accents because I, me and my fiance do a lot of accents all the time. Um, my most favorite is like, the Asian nail salon lady accent. I'd be like, oh honey, why you do this to yourself, honey? Why you know? You need to tie line your eye, honey. Spot on. I also like to do British accent. So I'd like to believe that my hidden talent is that I can do these accents and do them fairly well. I don't know if I'm good or not. It sounds good to me though. Now, this is asking about my job. So I have, um, I work for a local carpet cleaning company. Um, I am, they call my position inside sales, but more or less, it's basically like a receptionist position. Um, I do enjoy my job. Um, one of my favorite parts about my job is that I have met some of my like closest, very best friends there. Um, so I have at least four of my closest friends work there. What is hard about being a parent? Well, this is a good question. So my son um, is very similar to how I was as a child, um, which is a good and bad thing. Um, <laughs> It's good because I normally am one step ahead of him and I know what he's thinking before he does what he's thinking about doing. Um, so that's good because I can normally stop him before he does something that he's going to be in a huge trouble for. Um, so that aspect of it, um, I do like. However, my son did inherit his ADHD from me. Um, I had ADHD growing up and he has it double time. Um, his biological dad has it. So, um, he is just wild all the time. He never stops. He is crazy and he is like unfocused and just very all over the place. So um, keeping up with him and trying to make sure that you're raising your kids to be like decent members of society that aren't going to go into the world and um, just be genuinely bad people that are like out to hurt others. That's honestly, that's like the hardest part about being a parent. I'm gonna pick a good one because this is probably my last question because I'm almost done with my makeup. So, if you had one year left to live, what would you do for you? So if right now I went to the doctor and the doctor was like, uh, yeah, you're dying. Um, you have about, 12 months left to live um so yeah go live it up girl because once it's done it's done um honest i would first thing i would do is i would take my fiance and go down to the courthouse and get married right now not wait till april um i would be getting married like right now right now um so that's first um second i would probably um well this is gonna sound very grown up of me. I would probably like check my will and all of that to make sure that um, 
my son goes to the right place and that um, the people who are going to take care of him are prepared to do that. Um, so I would do that. And then, um, honestly, I'd probably like buy an RV and pull my kid out of school for a year and just travel all over with my, with my then husband and my son and just enjoy it. You know, just enjoy that last year. Go see things. Go see things that I haven't seen before, experience things I haven't seen before. Take my son, let him enjoy uh, making memories with me. That's probably what I would do. Ah! Can't believe you've done this. It's like it never happened. Oh, that is it um, for my first. <laughs> that is it for like my first, um, I guess, like get ready with me, get to know me video. Um, I figured, like I said, I figured this would be a good way to um, start off um, just with introducing myself and kind of letting you get to know who I am and about me. Um, I want this. My idea for this channel is to have it be a lot of things. Um, I want it to be about makeup. I want it to be about hair. I want it to be about beauty. I want it to be about health, um, exercise, be able to do makeup tutorials, but also be able to film the fun stuff that me and my fiance go do and when we hang out with my friends and um, basically just my life. Um, so if you have any suggestions of things that you would like to see, um, I am open to all suggestions, um, but I wanted to film like a fall look um, because it is officially September 6th, which means we are so close to fall. Yeah, I guess we'll see you next time. Bye.